Hey everyone, uh, great to see you all again. Uh, welcome to our very first Build Hour. Uh, I'm genuinely so thrilled to have you all here. Um, most of you probably already know this, but my name is Dara. I'm the founder and CEO of No Loco. Joining me here is Jill. Uh, again, most of you probably already know her, but she's our wonderful head of partnerships. And we're both really excited to kind of run this session today, our very first Build Hour. Just a quick reminder, this session is going to be recorded. So um, you'll be sending out the recording to you first thing tomorrow, kind of GMT time. That you know, might even be late late tonight for those of you on the West Coast. Um, so if you do miss anything, you want to rewind, you want to revisit, or you have to drop at any point, that's no worries. You'll get the opportunity to see the whole session again tomorrow and in the future. And for anyone that's new to NoLoco, uh, we're a platform, a no-code platform that allows you to build custom apps for your team and your clients on top of your existing data. You know, we have our own NoLoco tables, but you have, we integrate with Airtable, Google Sheets, Postgres, MySQL, Xano, and really just a whole bunch of other things. No local customers build really genuinely incredible things. And hopefully going to demonstrate one of them today, usually things like internal tools, client portals, custom CRMs, and, and honestly, so much more. And of course, all without code. Brilliant. And today's event in terms of timing, timings will last about 16 minutes. So we'll take you right up until half five BST. And I'll let you calculate the rest of those time zones for everyone else. And uh, we will be taking your questions throughout. So feel free to drop them in the chat or preferably the Q&A section if you can. And we'll leave about 15 minutes at the end dedicated to answering, you know, any additional questions you might have. So in this series, we're, you know, we're going to really see how this goes. It's first of its kind. We're excited to show you like how I would build one of our templates from scratch. Uh, so I was scrolling through our templates, realized we don't have a customer success one, even though it's what I spent a large part of my day doing, but then also, you know, it's a large part of all our customers too. So you'll get to watch as I take an app from zero to production, um, you know, describing our thought process, building out everything from the data tables to the interface, the permissions and the automation and everything else that needs to run this app. Brilliant. Really excited. And for our first session, we'll be building a customer success app. So this will be an app that'll help you track things like your customers' plans, their account information, their support requests, and just generally like help desk items that you would expect to see in a customer success app. And ultimately, the goal of this app is to help your customers self-serve. So in just 60 minutes, you're going to see an app, as Kadara said, go from nothing to something. And something that you could share with your team by the end of the session, which is the main goal of these build hours. And yeah, throughout the hour, you're going to have a chance to ask us directly exactly how we're doing it. And if anything's confusing or you're unsure, now's your time to ask us. Exactly. You know, we discussed kind of how we might approach this and we, we really went back and forth on whether we should kind of do a here's what I made earlier, you know, and then kind of go, you know, mm -hmm. just dive into a little bit. But we decided, you know what, we'll do this live without any kind of pre-baking. So there will probably be mistakes. Uh, I'll probably have to undo some of the things that I'm doing. And I probably haven't prepared as much as you might expect, but I'm very confident we're going to get something really interesting from this and that we're all going to learn a few things along the way. Uh, I will try and explain the best of my abilities what I'm doing um, and then Jill will kind of be in the chat and kind of also chatting with me to kind of discuss what some of the decisions I've made along the way and then obviously answering your questions too. So do throw them in the chat in the Q&A section and we'll try answer them live or in the chat. And yeah, I guess that's really it. So without further ado, um, let's start the first build there. Um, like I said, I hope you find it interesting. We'll be also sending out a feedback survey after this. So if you if you thought it was amazing and you want to see more of them, let us know. If you thought it was a waste of your hour, I'm very sorry. Um, but I don't think it will be. I really don't think it will <laughs> no. be. Cool. So um, yeah, basically, I am going to be starting with a completely blank app. So those of you new to NoLoco, and I don't think there's too many here, but this is as blank as they get. It comes with a user table with just, just me here, and there's just a profile page that comes with each app as well. Um, it's actually very difficult for you lot to even get to this stage, but believe it or not, I know a few things. So uh, I'll be building out the tables to begin with, then I'll be working on the app interface, then I'll be working on the kind of automations uh, that kind of power parts of the interface, and then towards the end, I might work on some um, different types of uh, permissions. So uh, one thing I decided was be interesting, like we're building a customer success app and NoLoco does have an AI kind of way to to do this as well. And I decided that actually might be really interesting to just look at what that AI would suggest. 
you know, how it could scaffold the app. But I decided not to uh, do that because that would take away from a large part of what I'm going to do today and the decisions I'm going to take from it. But for those of you who aren't aware, this is the kind of step two after you create a, 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 like a no local app from scratch, we ask you what you're trying to make. And if you have an idea of what you're trying to make uh, and the tables involved, you can you can do that. You can describe it. So here's a here's one I made earlier, and I promise this is the last one I'm going to say that. Uh, you know, this <laughs> this here is like a customer success app to track clients, tickets, and interactions. There are the three tables I will be building out, but I'm going to show you what the AI might suggest uh, when you do that. And basically, that client has a name, a primary contact, a logo, a plan type, a start date. You know, just a few basic things that a um a, a kind of a client might have a ticket has a title description attachments uh, a few other things and then an interaction uh, which is you know obviously a message a call an email that sort of thing and a description and a user so let's let's see what this comes up and while it's doing this i'm going to describe what we're actually doing today so I kind of realize i jumped a little bit forward so a uh, customer success uh, in its most basic form is a way of kind of tracking questions or issues customers are having being able to aggregate them up to the client level, you know, the company that that customer works for, and uh, being able to see, you know, make make it easy for the support team to action those requests, and also make it easy for the customer to submit those uh, questions, and then maybe even follow up and see the status of them, be kept in the loop with when things change. So, honestly, this this kind of AI part has done a pretty good job. It's created the three tables that I asked for. It's spat out things like name, primary contact, logo, plan type, start date. And I can see here a few of these might need to be adjusted in terms of the, the types of fields that they are, but you can do all of that in NoLoco once you kind of click next. So you've got a client's table, you know, that links out to an interactions table. So each client has an interaction and then tickets also have a user as well and an assignee. So honestly, pretty good so far. Um, you know, this is pretty much what I would have expected, right? I think, would you agree here, Jill? Anything you might think we'd be missing? No, definitely. I think it's, you know, a possibly overlooked element of NoLoco and such a productivity enhancing feature, right? Especially when you're starting off brand new to no code, blank canvas, not really sure where to start. It can be really good to get you over the hump. But yeah. ultimately, this build hour is going to show you how you can do it completely from scratch. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to yeah, stuff, yeah, so I'll switch back. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is kind of referencing these here. I'm going to just build out these tables one by one, right? So we're back here, we're back in NoLoco, and I'm just going to start building out these tables in NoLoco. So first thing, I'm going to click New Source, click NoLoco Tables. And what's actually nice is it kind of gives you some suggestions. So I'm going to start with the client table, right? And each row here is going to have the name of a client, um, possibly even a status. Uh, and I did actually want a started app, which is kind of like a, when that client was joined, joined us, you know, um, and I'm just going to click save. So what this is going to do is going to create that table for me. It might just take a second to kind of do that. Um, and when once it does create it, it's created those three fields on the table as well. It'll, uh, you know, bring me to that table. There you go. So, so we've got this table. There's no data in it, but you can see I've got, you know, client name. We've got status. So, well, okay, this status is set up for more of like a ticket, we'll get to that. But, um, you know, I think you, I could probably change these to something like active, right? And then, you know, maybe um, inactive uh, or, and maybe onboarding or something. Um, and that way you've got three kind of states of like, you know, you've got active clients, you got onboarding clients, you got inactive clients, right? Then what else did I say? I wanted a logo. So we've got client name, maybe we'll give them you know, their their logo. And will this be an attachment field? Pretty simple. Uh, one thing that's nice is that in a logo, you can choose whether uh, a logo or an attachment field should have multiple files or not. Clients only ever got one logo. I'm sure if you were doing client work where you needed the logos, you'd have many. But for the purpose of like display, you know, they've only really got one logo, right? Click save on that. Brilliant. Um, and it might even make sense at this point to kind of create a record just so we like know what we're looking at here. So uh, Keystone Construction, they're the guys who uh, um, who always come to my mind. I don't know why. Um, they're they're <laughs> one of my sample apps and we'll put them in the onboarding state. We'll put them as started as, you know, last week. Um, and I don't have a logo for them yet. I should have should have done one of them. Okay, now we can see our row. So you can see that, you know, you've got the different options here, the active, onboarding, inactive. 
and you've got you know, your name, your logo, and so on. Um, what else did I say I want? Um, plan type. Yeah, I wanted to kind of differentiate between the different plans. So again, this is going to be a a, a single option field. This is usually what I want. And I don't know. Let's go with the same type of plans we have at, at no logo. New starter, pro, uh, business, enterprise. Uh, this is going to be a way for your support reps to see how much of a priority is this customer is this customer request. You know, are they our enterprise customer? Are they you know are they just you know on the, the starter plan? When did they start? That sort of thing. And uh, what else did I say I wanted? Um, really, that's the kind of main ones. Of course, you could add basically anything else here. You could add like logo. You could add address. You got billing details, billing contact, anything else. But you know, at the end of the day. A client is really just a name, maybe a logo, maybe a contact detail. But so we'll stick with this at the moment. Next, I want to create a new table. I want to create a ticket table, right? And a ticket is again gonna have, you know what? I'm not gonna leave, I'm not gonna use any of these. I'm gonna go start from scratch. Um, because I, I want to make it a bit more customized, right? So ticket's gonna have a title field. This is gonna be a text field as well, single line, right? So you don't want your title to have span multiple lines. You want to keep it succinct, you know. Um, but you do want the description to be multi-lined, and you want that to be text, uh, long text, sure. And then, um, what am I going to do here? What else did I say? Uh, you know, attachment status type. Okay, so yeah, we're going to have an attachments field. That's going to be, you know, allow them to upload multiple attachments, unlike um, unlike the logo. You know, we can't, they might have multiple screenshots, multiple videos that kind of back up their bug or issue. We want them to be able to express themselves. We want them to be able to kind of submit as much as they want. But ultimately, you're building out your, your table. I know this stuff's not super interesting here, but you're kind of thinking about some of the little small decisions that are going to make your life a lot easier. Because realistically, once you've built out these three tables, the app's going to come together super quickly. But I also have some really cool no logo specific things that are going to tie this all together much more nicely. So what else did I say? Uh, I got title, I got a description, I got attachments. I want to link this to the user who submitted it. And I want an assignee, I want a status and a type. So I want, um, let's just go with status. I should have actually used status to be fair. Would have been smart. Um, so it's like new. Um, actually, you know what? I've got this, um, got them all here, don't I? New, open, new, open, reopened. I actually asked ChatGPT for all these. Something I'd really suggest you guys do. It's really easy. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, actually, these on a new line. Uh, open, in progress, on hold, escalated, resolved. Yeah, I actually kind of asked Jetri to plan a lot of this stuff. It was like, what's the most minimal viable kind of thing that you, you could do? Sweet. Status. Uh, great. You could customize the colors later, you know, get something more appropriate. Now we've got a status field. We've got all our options here. Perfect. Uh, what is this? Type. Yeah, type is going to be, you know, something like, um, you know, if it's a bug, if it's a feature, mm -hmm. if it's help, right? Um, again, just like, you know, they're, what sort of request uh, was it? All right, now that's the kind of basic stuff. Let's get into the more interesting stuff. All right, so let's deal with assignee. Assignee is who on the NoLoco team or the NoLoco support team is going to be assigned to this ticket when it comes in. So here's where we get really interesting. So should a ticket be assigned to multiple users? I think not. Personally, it keeps things, keeps things simpler if it needs to be changed, you could change assignee. You could maybe even track that if you wanted separately as it kind of moves hands. But I think it should be assigned to one person at a time. But most importantly, you know, multiple, a, a user should be able to be assigned to multiple tickets at the same time. That just makes sense. So allows user records to link to multiple tickets. That's true. And then, you know, if a, if a ticket has an assignee, then a user record has many, you know, we'll call it assigned tickets because we might have a created tickets something like that in the future. Mm -hmm. So we'll call it assigned tickets. Sweet. Let's just create our first ticket just to be sure. So we, you know, we'll call it, you know, um, problem yeah. paying for the app, something awful. No, I couldn't pay for the app. Pay. Mm -hmm. Let's assume I, you know, it's new, whatever it's, uh, it's a bug and it's assigned to me. 
Excellent. Yeah. And what else we got? We need so we've got plant type, we've got status, and then I wanted to do who submitted it. So what I what I actually think I'm going to do here is something you know. Usually I advocate for um you know linked fields, and we are going to do that. But I think we're going to do you know submitted by email, right? Because I think what I'm thinking about this app is that it's going to be a public form where they submit their tickets, right? And the public form then is going to allow the customer to just submit their email. Make it simple. They don't have to follow a unique link to them. Just submit their email. We'll know who it's by. If it's a client, we'll be able to automatically match that. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. So submitted by email. And then we have text. And actually, we can make this an email address. And it won't be unique. Brilliant. Easy peasy. And then um, I'm still between two minds whether I want my users to log in or not. I think I think it'd be interesting if they could, right? So I think uh, you know at the end of the day we could give them the option to like log, log in, or we could give the option of just you know following the public link to submit their tickets, and then you, they can see the ones that are tied to them. So what I will do is I will actually create it like submitted by, uh, and then this will be a direct link to the user table. And then this will also be, nope, they shouldn't be able to link to multiple records, but the user should be able to link to multiple tickets. So, you know, any given user can submit multiple tickets. But here's what's really interesting. So submitted tickets. If a ticket has a submitted by, then a user has many submitted tickets. And here's where it gets interesting. I'm going to automatically link these, right? So now you can say when the tickets submitted by email matches the user's email, automatically link these. That means we can send our users a public form, you know, and they just have to put in their email. And if that matches one of the forms in, uh, if this matches one of the users in our database, that's going to automatically link when that ticket gets created. And I can show you that. It's really simple. So let's create a new ticket. Test ticket two. Test ticket Dara. Just so we're clear. Call it, give it a status, give it a, you know, help, submitted by email. I'm going to leave submitted by blank, submitted by Dara at noloco.io, and then click save. And there you go, submitted by, automatically assigned. Magic. Might as well make this one the <laughs> same thing. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a re I think that's going to be really interesting in a few minutes. Uh, and then I think, you know, now that we have the assignee, let's go back to the user table. So any given user, I think there's going to be two types of users here. Uh, I think there's going to be, you know, my team and maybe even managers at some point, but then also, you know, the team being the support reps and then also the, the, the users, like the, my customers. So let's just create a client uh, link here. And this is going to be a user that will be linked to a client. So. We can say, you know, any particular user will have a client. And this is going to be the same. Nine times out of 10, you leave these as they are. Just FYI, you might be panicking with those. Most of the time, the intuitive way to think about it is, yeah, what I have, what I'm in should link to one thing. And then for that very reason, that the other side of the table should link to many things. Um, occasionally, though, you know, that's not the case. And you can handle that then. So if user has a client, then a client record has many users. Perfect. We're not going to automatically link these. No other changes here. Now, the thing here is that I've assumed that a user belongs to only one client. Again, that is the case for most people. If it's not, it does get really complicated. Uh, you know, if you have a customer <laughs> that says, actually, some of my customers work for multiple customers, you're like, what? How does that work? So uh, if, if you do come across that in your travels, stop and go, is that actually the case? Or is it just maybe someone thinking that they might want that in the future? You know, because that's often the case. So now that I've got these three tables, this is kind of the bare bones of what all we really need for a ticketing system, to be truthfully honest. You could go full bells and whistles, but this is really it. So at this point, I'm just going to stop and you know just kind of check in my roles. So I've got users. I'm going to change these to this to clients. I'm just going to rename it just so I have a better idea. And then I'm going to call this um, support reps so I know internally what these are. But they're they're really just the default roles that come out of These guys can't access all data. These guys can't. Simple, right? Um, and then I'm gonna add um a test client effectively. Um, you know, test client, uh, you know, test client. I could come up with better names with these. I don't know. Ben 
Ben Jones, why not? Um, and we'll call it Ben Jones example. So it's Ben Jones at noloco.io, and he's going to be a client. No instruction, no invitation email needs to be sent. So now Ben, uh, you know, will have access to this app if we send him the invitation link here, which is great. Uh, but it also means that Ben can be assigned clients. So I can say, hey, Ben actually is part of this one here. Ben is actually part of Keystone construction client. And that means when we start creating tickets by Ben, we're going to see how we can automatically link them to his account and so on. So here's what I'm going to do. One more thing, I'm going to add to the ticket a lookup of the client. So now, just based on this automatic link, we've got, you know, just from the email, we're going to say we're able to get the assignee's client, uh, not the assignee, sorry, the submit advice client. Um, so, and that's all going to be based on that, email, which is going to be really easy now to kind of make it, make it so that any client could potentially look at just their tickets or just other tickets submitted by, and you know, their, their, their business, or even more interestingly, you know, um, from the reporting side of things, I, as the kind of customer success manager, the support team, I'm going to be able to see, wow, which clients are asking the most questions, which clients are having the most bugs, you know, you're going to get really rich details there. And um, you're going to be able to gain insights into it. So these are the three tables that are going to power everything, right? And it's going to be as simple as that. Now, from the kind of instructions that we went to, there was a third table, uh, interactions. Now, this is all going to be nice to have. So I'm actually going to come back to interactions because I'm sure you're sick of me uh, just talking through database tables for the last uh, 20 minutes or so. And thank you for sticking with me so far. Um, <laughs> because we're going to jump into the, da to the data side of things now. So I promised we were going to look at the data tables. Once you have the data tables in place, and this is something that you know, new no local users really kind of miss, is like the app itself can only come together if you're happy with you know, how your data tables are put together. You know what I mean? Um, and really, that's why I spent the last 20 minutes kind of focusing on it. But now that I have focused on it, I can switch over, right? Here we are. Here is the no logo app as bare as it goes. I really dislike the gray color, so I'm going to hop into my team and design settings and change it to this nice cyan. <laughs> That's just personal preference. You can choose whatever color you want, including your own theme colors, by the way. Um, but I, I quite like this. So uh, I'm going to hop into build mode. It's this. I'm going to switch between this a lot. If the extension is the shortcut is Command E. I'm going to press that a lot. You might not see my mouse go down there. I'm also going to switch user a few times, and that's what you can do with this here. Or um, when you're not in build mode, you can do it with this here. Um, so I'm going to jump between those two things quite a bit, just because it makes building quite easy. So at the moment with this profile page, we're going to ignore this. And I'm going to add a ticket page. And this is really where we're going to look at. So I'm going to do two things, right? Ignore this error here. Um, it's just giving it out to me. I might need to reload the page. That might be all of it is. There you go. There's our tickets. All right. Now that we're here, now we've got a ticket page. Um, I'm going to customize this. Then I'm going to customize the record page. And then I'm going to customize the form. And the form is going to be what we make up the the um, the public form that we send to our people. So uh, if anyone doesn't know what this is, this is what we call the collection view. When you add a view like this, when you click plus and you click collections and you click one of your, your tables, this creates a collection view, which in effect has three pieces. It has the collection view, which is usually a list. It has, um, you know, the record view, which is one of the records, and it has the new record form. And I'm going to customize all three of these, and this is going to be the bulk of our app. And it, we're going to get, um, you know, some personalized views. What I'm thinking is you'll have one admin view for all tickets. I'm going to set a permission so that same view just shows you, you know, your your tickets as a client in the future. And then I'm going to customize a record view so that. Um, you know, you can see the valuable things in a ticket, including maybe interactions and stuff for the admins. And then the new form, we're going to get to that just towards the end. So really here, I think, you know, most ticketing systems, I should have got some dummy data for this, but, you know, most ticketing systems probably work off a Kanban system, right? You know, you've got um, your grouping here. And I don't know why this is the wrong way around. Maybe it's not. I can just switch this here anyway. Um, I must have uh, missed the ordering there. Um, Let's just put that again. Yeah. There you go. Okay. 
this is just incorrect. So now you've got new, open, in progress. So, and you can move these between them super easily. Um, and you, you customize what you want to see here. So I don't think the attachments are super important here. The status, well, we've already got that above. The type is a little bit important, but realistically the title and the description are the most important parts. So what I'm going to do here is I like to do this. I like to drop the, uh, sorry, this is the wrong one. Uh, title, I'm going to drag to the top. Description, I'm going to drag to the top. What I like to do is I like to drop the label on the title and I like to make this bold. And that kind of makes it nice. And then I like to use this handy little button to go down to the next field. And then I like to do the same from the label. I just like to make that, um, you know, uh, just it speaks for itself. It's not the bold thing. But I also like to make this markdown because when I give my users the option of creating tickets, I'm going to let that field be rich text. So, you know, the rich text field here is going to be, you know, they're able to bold things, they're able to add hyperlinks, they're able to like, put in bullet points. So I'd like this to do the same thing. Uh, and then otherwise, you know, you've really just got some simple things here, like, you know, label. Again, this speaks for itself too, to be honest. And then, you know, signee, I'm going to leave that as it is. Submitted by email. We don't need this because we're going to just keep this submitted by. And then the client, um, yeah, the client can stay there as well. That should be fine. Oh, yeah, they're all submitted by me. So let's actually check that our client lookup worked. I forgot that uh, I didn't do that. So let's uh, change tickets. So the one to test ticket by Dara, let's change this one to be submitted by uh, example. And this should update if I move this, which is actually the really nice thing. Uh, maybe it didn't. Let me just change it anyway. Um, then jumps. Great. And you see the, the client local did work there, which is great. So now we've got the client here, Keystone Construction. Um, great. Now I'm basically going to just open up one of my tickets. Uh, I think that I'm pretty happy with this. I think the only other thing actually we probably should do is we should add a few filters. So, you know, you can do things like we've already got status. So maybe you just want to filter by type. You just want a general search, you know, so I want to be able to type like or payments or paying, sorry. Um, and then you want, um, a signee. So you might, might be a manager going here. I, I knew Dara was working on a thing. But this is where it also gets interesting, right? So like the assignee, you're only ever going to want this to be a list of, you know, not clients, right? So you can do this two ways. You can add a filter basically on this filter. <laughs> and you can basically say that the, um, you know, the client is empty. That's one way of doing it. Now you can see that Dara is the only option here. If I clear this, you can confirm that. And that basically means we've got, um, you know, a list of just team members. There's a few different ways you could have done that. You could have done it based on role. You could have done it based on some other property. You could have done it based on email contains, whichever really works best for you guys, you know. Um, and then I'll just quickly customize this. I think, you know, this makes sense. Keep this here. Um, I like to do kind of something similar. We've got the title above, so I don't feel like that needs to be changed. But I like to make the description kind of full width. Again, make it markdown, um, you know, kind of keep maybe get rid of some of these other ones, uh, which probably aren't going to be changed all that much uh, and make them a highlight instead. So I'm going to just go ahead and you know, make it a highlight, drag the highlight up um, here. There you go. And let's say, what did we say it was? We're going to have a type, a signee, and submitted by a client. They are the key pieces of information. You know what? Instead, I'm just going to get rid of type here. We don't really need it. Um, and that's basically it. And what you could also just do then is I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make this because it's not really going to, I'm going to hide the edit one, actually, because that'll be a nice little touch. And I'm going to, um, you know, add an action button here that will just allow them to edit these fields just because uh, you're going to make it, kind of, you know, all these can't be fit. You know, you can customize these, but the assignee, the submitted by, that sort of stuff. Well, maybe the assignee should change, but you don't want it to be kind of ad hoc. You want it to be quite, you know, specific. So I'm going to just let them change these three things. Um, and then we'll just go kind of update. And I like to kind of say, to remind people what they're updating. So I'll put the title in quotes. And but then, now you've got the assignee. And I can do the same thing here. I can add, you know, this everywhere you add the assignee field, you're going to want to add a list, a filter for client is empty. And you're also going to want to change mark the description to display as a rich text editor. So now we've got, um, you know, we've got this, this section here that 
I have an edit of this and you get details. Right. Ticket details. Something like that. And um if I log out of edit mode, you, you can see what I've just been doing for the last ten to two minutes, which is this edit button here, which I arguably was quite similar to the edit button was up here. But I like it because it kind of gives you this kind of more control over, you know, you got um you got this now, you've got the rich text editor, which you could have done as well, you know. Uh, I had to reload. It's very upset about this. Um, and then, you know, uh, may maybe this is the support rep updating the description after they've gotten more details. I'll, I'll decide in a minute whether the assignee should be editable or not. And I think this is honestly it. You've got the attachments here as well. So maybe we'll also add another, attack another action button here to kind of add attachments. It's again, just really an optional thing. Um, the edit button that I disabled could do all of these things, but I feel like you might like to compartmentalize. And again, this is really just going to be an update or record action. And that updates the thing. And you know, add, remove, options, whatever. Uh, and yeah, it's really, where'd it go? Did I not finish that? Oh, I added it up here. That was a mistake. I mean, I could have left it there. Uh, it's the same thing. Let me see, add or remove attachments, update a record. I just want to add attachments. Actually, that was meant to be the total. Let's just make this edit again. Now, uh, you can see here, I've got an edit button here and I can add attachments like so, um, such as the build hour logo, but wallpaper. Sweet. All right, just checking in. How are we doing on questions? Everyone still with me? Does it all make sense to everybody? <laughs> cool. I noticed the numbers I haven't dropped so. off entirely, so I must be doing something right. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan, for the confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. Yeah, like this is basically it. And, you know, again, maybe a signee. We've got this somewhere else. I don't need this here. I just like to tidy it up. Sometimes less is more. There's so much more you could do here. Um, You know, in fact, actually, what I like to do is you know, oh, I suppose the assignee submitted by these are going to be things. So the question I get a lot is like, why isn't this clickable? But these are, and you know, one, the, the really simple answer here is that actually this, uh, there's no view for this yet. We've only got one view, right? And I'll show you exactly what I mean here. I know I won't be editing, the, I won't be customizing the client view too much today, but basically if I click client, uh, sorry, if I click new and I add a client view here, you can saw that lit up. You could see, sorry, that's that lit up now because I now have a, a client view and I've got a record view that this link could bring you to, right? So now basically, if I went back to this, um, and you know, you can see that this is now blue as well. So if I click this, you get brought here. So it's kind of all automatically interlinked, and this is why it's been so long in the data table before doing any of this. Okay, so now what have we got? We've got a very simple ticket board with search, uh, you know, by signee, by type, and just general search. Now you've got, um, you know, clicking in, you've got a, an overview of the different tickets. Um, you know, I might even, you know, tickets are pretty conversational. So let's say show record comments and comments open by default. And of course, we're going to let our team attach attachments. But, uh, you know, well, actually, maybe not. We'll see. But yeah, now you've got a really interesting place where you can kind of communicate back and forth on a particular ticket, get the details, and uh, really just solve the customer's problem and very quickly update them, you know? So I really want to dive into the form because I think that's where we're going to get most of the magic. And I do want to leave time for Q&A. So we'll fly through this part as well. Um, you know, ticket title. Uh, all you got to do, sorry, to edit the form is open... Um, Click the the new ticket button. You can customize that, by the way. The the, the number in there. You know, you just get brought to the form in the local. You you navigate to where you want to edit, and then you edit. You can also navigate to it from this button here, uh, if you want. So look, this is going to be really simple to, and very really similar to everything we've already done. Um, you know, I'll update the title to you know, log uh, submit a ticket. Submit sounds a bit nicer than create. Um, and you can customize this, but like you know, you know, uh, submit a ticket to the support team. We will, should have been online. We will follow up with you over email in 48 hours. So you can get the idea, right? 
And uh, what else are we going to do? Um, we're going to open up the fields here. So basically, there's options and fields. Everything's happening on this right side here. Title, I'm going to leave this pretty much as is, except I am going to make it required, right? That's it. And you know what, actually, because people are really lazy, I'm going to make sure that the text length should be greater than 60 characters. You know, I, I spend a lot of time in support. People say very little. <laughs> and you're kind of like, well, I'm just going to have to email you to ask for more details. So that's all I'm going to do here. And I think that makes sense. Well, actually, you know, you can add a little help text. Be like, um, please um, summarize. If I could spell summarize. Uh, your, you know, your, your question or request in, in you know, a few sentences. In a sentence. That'll do. In a sentence. Great. All right. You get the idea. Uh, next description. You know, um, please provide as many details as possible to help our team help you. You get the idea. Um, fill with 100%. You got a placeholder. You know, that's just the, the kind of preview text. You're like, my problem is, you can see that pop up here now. Display the field as this is what's going to be a rich text editor. Um, thankfully, the placeholder followed through. Uh, again, I'm going to make this required. Again, I'm going to make this, um, you know, should be longer than, uh, look, I'll be a little generous, 100. You know, if they want to add 40 characters to the title, that's fine. If they want to just paste that in, because people will. People definitely will. Attachments, optional. But, you know, you could say things like, you know, we don't want audio files. We don't want, you know, a podcast about the issue. We want, we only, so I'll turn off audio and I'll turn off uh, text. But we do want things like PDFs, videos, images. You know what? Maybe we don't even want videos. We want like videos through Loom. Again, very much up to you, but you can control this here, right? You can control that there and you can you can kind of put in a better you know, explanation for what you want. Next up, we have status. Um, status, this is not something the user should control, right? So this is going to be a hidden value, right? And this is always going to be new, right? You're submitting a new sub ticket. It's going to be hidden. You saw it disappeared here. Um, we're going to make this new. Or we're going to like, basically, when this form gets submitted, the new is going to be the value for status every single time. Type, on the other hand, very similar type field, but we do want the user to tell us more about this field. So. Let's make this radio buttons. I love this, right? And then you can actually come in and go give each help text. So, you know, something went wrong with the product. Um, you know, uh, I would like a new feature in the product. And, uh, you know, the last one is help. It's like, I'm not sure how to do this. Perfect, right? Now you've got really nice kind of choose the thing. And you can, again, you can customize this, you know, what uh what is your you know best about sure I'll be, I'll be a little bit more nice and also i'm going to make this required because it's very basic assignee that's going to be uh you know we're just going to completely omit that that shouldn't really be here submitted by we're going to block right because they're not going to choose that they're just going to choose email and we're going to make this required and we're going to make it um a display as yeah, actually, that's it. Uh, it it will already be, you'll see if I type in this, it, it, it already, because we said it was an email field, and I can show you that here. Uh, we said it was a format email address. Uh, the validation is kind of built in. So all I really need to do is um, just say something like your email. It's like, please leave your email so we can follow up with a uh, resolution or any other questions. Ideal. All right, so now, it's got a ticket form. Um, and let me just quickly run through it. So I'll drop out of build mode and I'll just fly through it. So let's see, we've got, um, you know, my form is too fast. It loads, it saves me too much time. <laughs> okay, 60 <laughs> characters is a lot. I might have been, I might have jumped a gun on that one. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I'm not going to change it. I'm here. I'm in too deep. Um, can you please? There you go. And make it slow. All right. And uh, description. I don't want to hear all day, so I'm just going to paste this twice. This is the type of stuff you'll see. But you know, you know, can I do this? And you got to say okay, point one, point two, and then some code blocks. You know, that type of stuff. 
Maybe that's not how it works. Uh, my It's bug. I don't want any of these. And then just my email is, what, was, what did I say? It was example at Ben Jones. Excellent. You can see it was submitted by you guys, client. Uh, it's not assigned to anyone yet. Perfect. Um, so this is kind of where it gets really interesting, right? So we've got the ticket view, we've got clients. I, I think we need to do a few more things. So now that we've got a ticket view, right? I'm going to make this icon the board view. If I can, yeah, Kanban board, this one. Yeah. Uh, we call this tickets, right? But I'm going to add a sub view. And this is something that kind of, um, you have to get used to in the loco. So you basically can have a sub view, which is a different way to present the view, a different way to filter the view, but it'll use the same record view and the same new record form. Um, so let me see, like tickets clone. I'm going to call this open tickets, OK? Uh, basically, this is going to be, it doesn't need to be Kanban board, right? It's going to be something like rows, right? And I'm going to filter this to basically tickets that are Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it two ways to add a condition group. So tickets that uh, are either um, status is equal to uh, new or where the assignee is empty. Now you've got, if nobody's assigned it or for some reason it's still in the new state, it's here, right? And that means your team, when they're waiting, and kind of come in here. Now I'm going to add an action button, right? An action button, a yeah, record button in this case, is going to make it um, really easy to um, claim it, right? So I'm just going to hit claim. And I'm going to make it a one-click button. And it's going to uh, basically just update that record to change the status. Firstly, the status is going to be changed to open. OK, maybe in progress, but we'll get past that. And then uh, assignee, it's going to be me. So I'm going to claim it, basically. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be other ways to assign tickets. But you know, this is a nice way of saying, I have claimed this ticket. So now, um, if I'm here, you can see that, well, the assignee field is pretty irrelevant now. So I'll drop that out here. Uh, maybe we don't need the full description here. And then we'll just give the title. Um, it's full row um, with a label for that. My God, so it looks a bit more elegant. And we don't need a group here either, but we could group by, uh, not by status, but by type, you know, so you can kind of see, okay, I actually want bugs, right? And I also don't need the filter on assignees anymore because all of these, by the way, were just copied over from the filters I had on the previous tickets page. That's why they're here. Um, and basically, um, but now that I'm here, I'm able to kind of drop it a billboard and say, you know what, actually, yeah, this this one, I can tackle this. I'm going to click claim. It's going to spin. I probably should have opened it, actually. Uh, but <laughs> now you can see that it's gone from this view, most importantly, because the assignee is is there. And that was this one here. And you can see the assignee is now there. OK, so that's a nice little um, you know, action button that can save you a lot of time. And of course, this is where visibility rules start coming in, right? It's because that view is something that you know your customers don't need to see. So let's come here and change this to only be visible to, and this is where it gets really easy, right? Internal, easy, done. I mean, if you want double security, you can kind of make it support reps. But basically, that's as simple as it is. And we can go a bit further. We can go, let's actually uh, you know, clone this one again. And um, this time, we're going to call it My Tickets. And we're going to do basically keep all of these filters. I like these. Um, I'm going to keep it as a board view. And I'm going to go to the relative filter. I know I'm flying through things here. But uh, you know this is kind of, one, like I said, once you've built out the data table, it all kind of starts together. Uh, so you got the relative filter here. I'm going to hit logged in users. And then I'm going to hit assigned tickets. Right? So now it's just my tickets. And obviously, that also means that the, uh, the um, assignee field is not very important. But you know, yeah, you just get to see my tickets, which is different than overall tickets. You can see there's three here, and uh, sorry, only two here. And most importantly, if I click into one of these, you can still get brought to this page that we built earlier. So you don't have to rebuild anything. You don't have to kind of reach your whole your whole day to recreate a lot of work, right? Uh, one thing I haven't really done is the client page, so I'll probably uh, really don't need that. But the only thing I'd probably put on the client page, by the way, this looks fine. And I would probably just add a new 
tab here. Um, you know, so you want one, you know, if you're clicking into a client, you probably want to see their details, you know, things like what plan they're on and so on. But you also want a tab to kind of just check out their tickets. So I would basically kind of add it. So what I did there is added the tab. Now I've added a collection to that page. Just really simply going to choose tickets and then go back to options. And I'm going to do relative filter. And this is basically the same thing I did with logged in user assigned tickets a minute ago. Now I'm going to do ticket from client collection. So now you've got just the tickets that belong to Keystone Construction here. And I can customize it. And I'll get to this, but you know, you got um got the new to open. You know, you kind of go back and you customize this to meet meet your needs. Um, make this renders markdown, that sort of thing. Um, and you know, you again you click here, you get brought to the page that we were a minute ago. That's really all you need to do. Um, we'll just add plan type here, maybe, and status yeah. drop them out of here and you're kind of good to go or users actually users is a good one uh, actually not none of this is important um because i'm going to put the logo up here aha so we're going to choose field for image and we're going to choose logo and of course i didn't give these guys a logo let's go back to the data table and let's see if i can whip out a logo very fast um that's someone on my team. Yeah, sure. Look, this will do. Um, we've all seen the progressive weapons picture. Um, <laughs> not a brilliant logo, but there you go. You got the logo up there. You got their status. You got their tickets. And, you know, you might have another list of users. And you'll say these are the users that belong to this client. And we'll make that a table. And we will. Yeah, these are the tickets they've done. Maybe they've created hundreds. So you should just say, you know what? Let's just show a condensed version. Uh, and then you can do really interesting things. Like you can do things like, uh, all right, now we've got, I know I'm jumping around here, but we have 10 minutes left. So I want to jam a few more things in. So now that we know that a client has users and a client has tickets based on those users, we can also do things like number of tickets. Um, and that will be something like uh, uh, a rollup and it'll be, you know, the tickets and it'll be honestly anything and then just count, right? And it'll be, it should say one here. Oh, sorry, it should say two. What am I saying? It should say two because we know there's two tickets there. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of, or you could do the same thing here. You could do um, number of tickets signed, and this could be uh, another roll up, and this would be a signed tickets collection. This would be this, and that would be some or sorry, count. Um, and that would mean you'd be able to have a dashboard. The, the opportunities are pretty endless. Um, I haven't really been looking at the comments. Uh, I know a few of you had the dip. I'm sure you're very busy lives, but uh, I know we've roughly nine minutes left i can keep chatting or um i can kind of pause for some questions if people have any <laughs> but i hope you can see that in what 45 minutes we've gone from nothing to an app that has a few different views a few different forms oh actually i did want to do one more thing sorry just permissions permissions are something people really struggle with so i'm just going to do one quick demonstration and if you have any questions please show them in the chat. So we'll do permissions. Permissions, they're tricky, but they're, they're, there's basically two steps to them. Um, so you want to go to the table, you want to click permissions icon here. You can also click here because we like to do things a few ways in the logo. You just click enable permissions, right? This will turn on permissions for this table. But don't worry, you can turn it off if you feel like you don't know what you're doing. And it'll also create your first rule for you. And it'll only create rules for roles that don't have access to all your data. So client uh ticket permissions right and this is this is where it gets really simple so you just give it a name you say what role it's going to apply to and then this is the most important part should these users have access to all records all tickets no they should only be able to see records based on the rule that i want so i'm going to say ticket uh submitted by well this is where we have a choice is do they only want to see their tickets or tickets submitted by their client i think we'll stick with their tickets and then we'll just say ticket submitted by is one of logged in user. And it's usually some combination of this. You just want to match the user or the client on the left to the user or the client on the right. 
and basically that and then you can do things like look they shouldn't actually be able to update the status they should be able to create it as we saw they shouldn't be able to they should be able to read it they definitely shouldn't be able to update the type of ticket they should be able to create it they definitely shouldn't be able to update or or create the assignee uh, and you know they shouldn't be able to update the uh, submitted by or they shouldn't be able to update the submitted by and um otherwise yeah they should be able to do everything else and we'll just click save and i'll show you what that does so i've been viewing this app as dara the whole time and if i just stay on this tickets page and then if i change to view the app as ben our only client because i didn't generate more clients so there's three tickets on this page at the moment now there's only two that's it that's permissions right if ben opens his ticket he can see things like this he cannot edit the assignee remember remember we, we did that form you can still see the assignee. you don't have to change your form just for for your clients you can leave it as it is uh, and it'll just be read only that's it that's really really it so um yeah that's uh that's the run through i think um i hope that made sense there's obviously a lot more you could do and i hope you could see how like you could actually fit this into some of your existing workflows and you know this was based on tickets right i think we talked about this earlier jill and i know you've been digitally mm -hmm. in the comments and appreciate it but uh <laughs> yeah i think like tickets is what we focus on today but if this was like you know applications for a job or applications for anything um you know there, there's so many parallels it's just collecting data assigning it remembering who it came from you know, visualizing it, bringing it through a workflow, prioritizing the the right data to show that sort of thing. You know, it's a it, it's really just an extension of that, and it really doesn't matter. Um, you know what you're working on; it, it's the same process that you go through. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, yeah. And uh, you know, it's really cool to see in the chat all the different tools that people are trying to build on NoLoco. I think yeah, with the customer so success app. Question. We can relate to it in some way. We've either been on the side of the customer creating our ticket or we've been on the support team managing tickets. So we yeah. hope it's been, um, I, well, I definitely can say that it was super relevant and there's lots of things that you've applied in this app that can be carried into lots of other solutions. Um, and yeah, I think the lack of questions, Dara, is just a sign that Simple. everything was super clear. So well done, you. Wow. Great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm realizing now that the only thing I didn't show was workflows. Would you like to see a workflow in like two minutes? That I'd love to. There is show one people. question that we might actually address live yes. very quickly. So um, also, it's a question we can definitely answer. Yes. So one from Raphael, actually, which I answered in the chat. It was just around, and it may be something that we'll have to follow up after today's call. Um, mm -hmm. basically to do with the Kanban board, which I believe you already have. Um, yes. Set up. Um, and basically, when he tries to move a card to a status located out of the screen, like closed in this example, um, the drag and drop action doesn't scroll the screen. So you can't change the status to closed without stopping in the middle. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, I thought uh, so too. It just um, requires a little bit of like wiggling. Uh, yeah. You can also scroll, I think. You know, it's easier on Mac with a trackpad, but. Um, yes, so this is me course. scrolling, but the first attempt was me just kind of holding my mouse just at the end. Uh, but if we hear your feedback, we'll see what we can do about that. <laughs> just jiggling. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. When you're alive, you say the weirdest things. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> if it's still persisting, Raphael, um, and you have an example of it in Loom, uh, maybe just it, throw it into support. It could be the blank page thing. We were, I don't know if you remember, saw that book coming up, which we yes. addressed, I think, actually, since, uh, yeah. since this morning. So, okay. Um, very yeah. good. I would love to show a workflow. This is the last thing. So you go for it. Basically, yeah. Yeah. it would be super easy to notify the customer every time that the status is changed. Um, so I'll create a workflow based on tickets. And basically, workflows are like when something happens, do something. And you know, I'm gonna just call this notify customer of status change. Uh it's important to speak like a robot. Um, it makes it easier to for future you to remember. No, I'm joking. Uh, okay, so basically, you get the trigger is like what's going when, when are we triggering this workflow? And it's just like when a ticket record is updated, right? Um, we could also have one like when a ticket is uh, is created, we email them to say, hey, we have your ticket, we'll get back to you. But I'm not going to show you that one. We're just going to watch the status field. That means anytime the status field changes, this is going to run. Okay, and 
really simply, we're just going to say send an email. And who's it going to be to? Well, it's going to be to the trigger, which is the ticket, change ticket. And uh, we could use the submitted by email because that's always there. Or you could just use the submitted by email, whatever one. They should be the same value um, if it's great. I'll just use submitted by email for thing. And then you just say, like, you know, your ticket. And this is where you use, like, um, you know, dynamic values. Your ticket title uh, is has been updated. You know, new status, blah, status. And it's like, then you get a bit more detailed. Hey, you know um trigger you know submitted by first name and then i'm pretty sick of time i'm just going to show you this but that's basically it and um you know you would do that you could you know send an attachment if you needed them to you could send them a url to the ticket anything you need you could send them to your guides whatever and that basically all you need to do is turn it on and then you could test it directly from here as well and um uh, now we have a very functional um Ticketing system with notifications. Easy peasy, right? Yeah. That fake email just got email. So there you go. Um, but yeah, that's mm -hmm. basically it. And don't forget to uh, publish, you know, the first ticketing system. <laughs> yeah, no. And some great feedback in the chat. So thank you, everyone, yeah. for tuning in. Thanks, folks. We will be posting this to YouTube as well. So you can. Yes, that answers your and... question, Joel. Uh, we're going to upload this immediately and probably send out an email reminding everyone tomorrow a.m. GMT. So it might be tonight if you're on the West Coast. It might be first thing tomorrow. Otherwise. Brilliant. Well, thank you all. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Talk to you soon, everyone. Yeah, I appreciate it. We'll um, hopefully do this all again soon. So keep an eye on your emails for upcoming inbox. But yeah, thanks for everyone for attending. Really appreciate all the questions. Hope this was helpful and we'll hopefully soon make this a template that you can just use yourself and learn from as well. It's the best part. Okay. Thanks everyone. See y'all soon.